Depending on who you ask, experimentation into science fiction technologies is taking place every day in secret research labs around the world, creating capabilities that most would claim to be impossible. Some point to unexplained occurrences and UFO sightings as proof of this activity. Whether you believe this is true or not, one thing you don't expect is to find it recorded in official government patent documents. But this is exactly what I found that led me to today's discussion. John Quincy St. Clair is a mysterious man behind a number of even more mysterious patents, filed in a short span of time in the early 2000s before being abandoned. While the nature of these patents are typically in the realm of the absurd and unbelievable, maybe the weirdest thing is that not all of them are head scratchers. There are a couple of entirely mundane creations in the mix, such as one for an internet-connected mailbox which alerts an app when you have mail, and another for an internet service that allows people to purchase cell phone cards. But that's not what you're here for. UFOs, walking through walls, remote viewing, these are the things you're here for, and these are the topics which John St. Clair concerned himself with. In the early 2000s, he filed a number of patent applications with names such as Walking Through Walls Training System, Full Body Teleportation System, Magnetic Vortex Wormhole Generator, and Electric Dipole Spacecraft. There are many patents to cover, but let's talk about some of my favorites in brief so you can get an idea of what kinds of topics we're dealing with. I'll link the full list of patents in the description for anybody who wants to dive into them personally. There are a number of patents that relate to an electric dipole propulsion system and ultimately an electric dipole spacecraft. Essentially, an advanced spacecraft which uses a rotating series of electromagnetic plates to create upward lift on the spacecraft. The walking through walls training simulator is exactly what it sounds like. A virtual method of training people to learn to walk in a specific phase so that they may transfer their body along hyperspace energy and phase through solid objects. The remote viewing amplifier is a viewing station designed to help, quote, the projection of spiritual modules of the human energy field to distant locations in order to see, communicate, and interact with other entities who live in subspace, space, and hyperspace co-dimensions of the universe, end quote. St. Clair claims that his first such expedition had him traveling in excess of 10,000 miles, while eventually he was able to travel as far as 400 light years away from Earth. Even beyond the creative topics presented in St. Clair's patents, the background of many of these inventions submitted in the patent applications are even more wild. His patent for a full-body teleportation system claims that the method was discovered when he was walking parallel to a commercial airport and found himself teleporting 50 yards from where he stood as a plane passed overhead. His other patents describe his experiences with remote viewing, astral projection, and even traveling through hyperspace to make contact with an extra-dimensional group known as the Pleiadian Federation. Believe me when I say there are pages and pages worth of intricate background in these patents, and trying to go into them here would make this video extremely long. So I'll make a deal with you. If I can get a combined 100 likes and comments on this video, I'll do a separate deep dive video where I'll explore some of the more intricate parts of these stories, word for word. Getting back to the patents at hand, the electric dipole spacecraft is the one I came across first, as I was doing research on the upcoming actions by the US government to declassify much of its body of work on the study of UFO phenomena. In the UFO community, there is talk of a spacecraft known as the TR-3, or TR-3B, which takes the form of a black triangle and uses an advanced propulsion system which is capable of rapid changes in speed and of moving at hypersonic speeds without producing a sonic boom. Some believe that this patent is evidence that St. Clair has contributed work to the TR-3 program, or at least that that's the name that the government used to register the patent. This speculation could become more relevant in coming days as we get closer to the date that the Pentagon is supposed to declassify a large amount of information about UFOs or UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena, as they are sometimes alternatively referred to. Patent documents for the electric dipole spacecraft do show a striking similarity to reported pictures of the TR-3 aircraft, but this could just as much be a case of St. Clair himself being inspired by popular mythology. Speculation aside, John Quincy St. Clair is a figure of minor mystery on the internet, with few sources discussing these mysterious patent documents, and even fewer providing any sort of evidence as to who St. Clair might be, or his potential motivations for filing these patent applications. 
the majority of which would be officially listed as abandoned after failing to respond to further correspondence by the U.S. Patent and Trade Office. As patents are publicly accessible and require a small amount of information from the inventor, this is our only other real source of information on John St. Clair. Before I go any further, I shouldn't have to say this, but please do not attempt to contact or bother any of the people that may be tangentially associated with anything I'm about to disclose. Combing through public records looking for answers is one thing. Harassing or making contact with anybody as a result of the speculation surrounding this could easily cross a line. All of St. Clair's patents list an apartment address in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Turning to Google, we find that this is a 12-story high-rise apartment building located on the ocean front. White Pages currently does not list St. Clair as a resident at the location. However, a property search on LandGrid.com reveals that as of the April 2020 census, John Q. St. Clair is still listed as the owner of the apartment, with a forwarding address listed in Madison, Wisconsin. This is an interesting piece of information because Google searches for a John St. Clair will eventually pull up a LinkedIn profile in that name. The only information on the page identifies this John St. Clair as a hyperspace physicist at the Hyperspace Research Institute. This profile corroborates St. Clair and the Hyperspace Research Institute being located in Wisconsin, but I've been unable to find any other piece of information on this supposed institute. Turning to Wisconsin real estate transaction records, we can enter the address of the house listed as St. Clair's address and find that John Q. St. Clair is listed as the seller of the house in a transaction that occurred in February of 2019. This transaction record lists St. Clair's new address as an apartment still in the town of Madison, Wisconsin. If we take this new address and put it into Google, there are almost no relevant hits save for one, a U.S. Patent and Trade Office profile for a John St. Clair. This time, with a hit for a trademark filed much more recently in June of 2020. While this one doesn't have to do with hyperspace technologies, it is suitably sci-fi. The trademark in question is for the name D-Eliminator, which is described as a device for creating deuterium-free water through the freezing of ice. Deuterium is a stable isotope of hydrogen. Regular hydrogen may be referred to as protium to distinguish the two. Deuterium is hydrogen which has an additional neutron increasing its molecular weight. Deuterium is different enough from protium that scientists have recently determined humans can taste a difference between water with different concentrations of deuterium. Water made from deuterium atoms, sometimes known as heavy water, has different physical properties from regular water, including different freezing and boiling points, and a different rate of chemical reaction. Heavy water is most commonly associated with its use in nuclear reactions where these distinct physical properties are useful. Deuterium is considered relatively safe to drink in small amounts, but deuterium depleted water has been the subject of some study in regards to health benefits of its own. Some animal and plant studies, as well as a small number of human studies with admittedly problematic procedures, have found that deuterium depleted water may have potential anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties, as well as promoting cellular energy. Despite the subject needing much more research to be accepted, deuterium depleted water can currently be bought commercially at prices typically ranging between $5 and $30 a liter. Given the state of the technology currently, the potential health market, and the high price for commercially processed deuterium depleted water, it makes sense for an inventor to take interest in at-home solutions to process it. However, in April of this year, the trademark application was denied for failure to respond to a request for clarification in much the same way that many of his initial patents were abandoned. As interesting as it is to find out that he's still involved in some fairly eclectic intellectual property practices almost two decades after his abandoned spacecraft and teleportation patents, it seems he is still routinely allowing the applications to be abandoned, leaving only the question of why someone would go to such lengths repeatedly without ever finishing the process. Unfortunately, that's the most recent activity I can find on our inventor friend, John St. Clair. I was able to track down the application info for the most recent application, which included a correspondence email. I've reached out to this email account and requested an opportunity to talk about some of his more interesting ideas and to see if he'd be willing to shed some light on the mystery of these patents and the existence of the Hyperspace Research Institute. At the time of this writing, I have not received a response, and I'm not really expecting one, but I wanted to give the opportunity to share his side of this story if he chose to do so. If I do receive a response, I'll definitely make an update video. 
It's at this point that I have to ask again that viewers please not attempt to track down this information for the purpose of harassing parties potentially involved. I have purposely refrained from giving out specific identifying information, and I do understand that much of this information is publicly accessible to those that wish to do so, and that's the reason that I make this request again. Before we wrap up the story altogether, however, there is one more interesting note. Google's patent archive reports that in 2015, John St. Clair assigned the patent for his full-body teleportation system to one Luis A. Hecht Rojas. The name pops up in two places when searched on the internet. Once when a Luis Alberto Hecht Rojas was arrested in Bakersfield, California, and charged with possessing a California driver's license in a fake name and submitting a passport application in the same name. An individual with that name and in that area also has social profiles indicating that they work as a creative technologist for the company Viacom, which has recently merged with CBS. While creative technologist is a vaguely defined job title, it certainly seems like it might be the type of position where one would have an interest in such a patent, abandoned or not. But this odd set of circumstances really does add to the strangeness of everything that has John St. Clair's name on it. That's all the information we have at this point in time. And honestly, all of the digging may have brought up more questions than answers. Who is John Quincy St. Clair? And what is the Hyperspace Research Institute? Is he working for some shadowy group or government agency? Is he a simple patent squatter who's gambling big on patenting sci-fi technologies before they become true? Maybe he's just a great writer and is using the USPTO as a new and innovative platform for some form of fiction storytelling. Please tell me what you think in the comments especially if you have any particular theories, or if you're aware of any information that I may have missed, which is always a possibility. Be sure to subscribe if you want to stay notified about follow-ups on this topic, as I do deep dive readings into the intricate worlds fleshed out in these patent documents. And John St. Clair, if you're watching or listening to this now, please feel free to drop by in the comments or send me an email. We'd love to have any perspective you could share on all of this. Until next time, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you.